know what a normal Pythagoras cup is. This is a normal Pythagoras cup. It looks like a cup with something coming up. I love the Pythagoras cup. If you fill it too high, it will activate a siphon, and it'll suck out all of the water, and, well, you'll get nothing, or any liquid. So it's called the Greedy Cup. I love the Greedy Cup. Now, you can fill this cup up like normal and drink from it, but if you get greedy and fill it up too much, then it drains the entire cup. This cup works by using the siphon effect. There's a tube up in the center portion here, and when you don't fill it too high, it doesn't reach the top of the tube. You can use the cup normally, but when you fill it too much, then it reaches the top of this U-shaped tube and creates a siphon that empties the entire cup. The legend goes that this cup was created by Pythagoras around 2,500 years ago in order to punish his peers who were too greedy and overfilled their cups of wine. This is why it's also called the greedy cup. But now let's look at the devious Pythagoras cup. Notice that there's no center tube area here. Now I can fill it up with a modest amount of liquid and it doesn't empty, but watch what happens when I get greedy. So now we have more than enough, we don't want to get greedy, but if we just want a little bit more, watch what happens. <laughs> well we know that there has to be some siphon effect going on here, but where? Well it's actually hidden in the walls of the cup, it's gone. <laughs> I have a half version of the cup here. So as the water fills the cup, it fills up here, reaches this level, and then it reaches this tube that goes up and around to this side, and then it starts flowing through this side, and comes out the bottom. So then it creates this siphon effect that pulls it all around and out the bottom. This is such a better version than the standard Pythagorean one weird object with something in the center. If it's so cool, why wasn't it made like this in the first place? Well, this type of design is extremely hard to manufacture and was almost unobtainable until now. But what changed to be able to make it? We have 3D printers. 3D printers are amazing at making things that would be near impossible to fabricate with other methods. So far, I've just glossed over the fact that the siphon effect works. Obviously, this effect has been known for thousands of years. But for hundreds of years, we didn't really understand exactly how it worked. For example, the traditional explanation is that gravity pulls down on the exit side of the tube. This causes a reduced pressure in the portion of the tube that's above the water level. So the atmospheric pressure pushes up the water from the upper reservoir into the tube until the whole thing empties. But if that's true, then a siphon shouldn't work in a vacuum. But watch this. It still works. It clearly operates just fine in a vacuum. So it can't be that the atmosphere is pushing it up into the tube. But then just recently it was proposed that a siphon works more like a chain. Let's say you have a chain hanging over a pulley, and one side of the chain is on a higher level than the another side. So in order to get from the top to the bottom, the chain has to go up and over this, but it still works. The longer side will pull on the shorter side until the whole chain has fallen over to the lower head. So the water can pull on the remaining water in the tube through surface tension and cohesion, just like this chain here. But if that were true, then it would mean that if there are any gaps in the line, it would stop the siphon because there's air and the water can't tug on itself. But watch this. This is called a flying droplet siphon. There's clearly no continuation of water contact between these two reservoirs, but the siphon effect still works. So it can't be explained by purely a gravity effect, or a cohesion or surface tension effect, or an atmospheric effect. So what's the answer? Well, there are actually contributing factors from all of these effects, and probably more. So none of these ways of describing how a siphon works are wrong, but they're just incomplete. It takes all of them together to truly describe how it works. So the safest thing to say about how a siphon works is that once you force liquid into the tube by suction or by immersion, the flow is maintained by the different fluid pressures of the tube openings. And before we end, if you're looking into a 3D printer to print cups like this, I want to tell you about the sponsor for this video, Creality. They sent oh, I love Creality.
the cloud and watch your prints update in real time. You can even calibrate your printer vibrations so that you get near perfect prints. If you want to check out the Ender 5S1 with the Sonic Pad, you can click the link in my description. And by the way, I didn't design. Weird. Rest in peace, David Brandon. Uh, it's not that Brandon. Hi, man, David Brand, well known as both a global leader in agricultural conservation and the face of the It Ain't Much But It's Honest Work meme from 2018, has passed away. Aww. As it turns out, he was an extremely smart man, paving the way for sustainable agricultural methods used all over the world, such as no-till cover crops, soil health, nutrient-dense crops, and direct marketing. David began farming in the late 1960s, after returning home as a Vietnam veteran, immediately turning to a peaceful life of agriculture, eventually running operations for Walnut Creek Seeds alongside his family. However, the extremely popular meme utilizing his face comes from a 2014 U.S. Department of Agriculture blog post, wherein David was photographed for the launch of a new soil health campaign. Then, in 2018, Pettigrew would caption the image with the classic words, It ain't much, but it's honest work, shoehorning David into the humble farmer stereotype despite him never saying that phrase. In fact, it's highly likely most people seeing the meme assume he was on some sort of television show and the captions were actually subtitles. This meme became extremely prolific around the world, and it even got to the point where David was, of course, aware of its existence. However, it's actually worth going into the impact he's had on the farming industry, as many experts in that area treated him as a celebrity not just for his online presence, Effectively, what people around the world do is till or plow their crops before seeding. This is done to remove weeds and make sure the land is ready. However, if this is done without soil health in mind, it can absolutely ruin the ecosystems of insects and microbes thriving underground, destroying the structural integrity of the dirt and gradually robbing it of nutrients, as well as encouraging erosion. Eventually, this plowing would turn the dirt to dust, and as such, Dave's methods of no-till and cover crops have become an internationally recognized way to ensure the same plot of land can be farmed for many generations, with far less effort. Despite the fact that Dave never said the quote most commonly associated with him, it turns out that he achieved quite a lot in his lifetime by improving the planet, and that is extremely honest work. Rest in peace, Dave. Aww. There's one thing called, like, the ten, the, uh, it's called Phantom Strider, like the ten most hated, um, okay, I need to search it up, under, I wonder if he has any, uh, more top ten, because there's one that, top ten most hated Spongebob episodes, I don't really like the new ones as much as I do the old ones, I'm more of an OG fan. Spongy episodes that made people vehemently furious. While well, I looked over the Scumbob wiki and other sites like IMDb to see which are the lowest rated, most reviled episodes. So let's check out the 10 most hated Spongebob episodes. And after I talk about the episodes and why it's hated on the internet, I'll give a bit of my own opinion on what I think of the episodes. So with that said, let's begin. For number 10. SpongeBob's bad habits. Now, I get that nail biting is a real problem for some adults, but this was seen as pretty ill from start to finish. It's a new episode, I know it. Yup, just from the animation, I can tell it's all is a very new episode. I'll discuss some of its redeeming qualities later. According to the Scumbob Wiki, this is what they call a Super Scumbob episode. And online, it has a very poor reputation. According to a review of the episode from the archive, I don't like this episode at all. It really irritates me. It makes me sick and it makes me scream horrifically. I would never watch it again. Viewers and users, please don't bite your nails. Ugh. I guess this person really didn't like the nail biting habits. Anyway, I think there are a few reasons this episode wasn't well received online. The obvious one being, it's kind of gross watching SpongeBob bite his nails for 12 minutes straight. And even putting that aside, SpongeBob gnawing on his nails just gets boring kind of quickly. But it's perhaps most notorious for its second hunt, where SpongeBob goes on a rampage biting random people's nails. What the world? That's weird, even. 
Even by SpongeBob standards, dude, Steven Hilberg would be displeased. I guess it makes sense that they get a lot of people like that in the theme park dedicated to Love Lovers. While the episode itself is known as Super Scumball, its final fingernail biting scene is perhaps the most notorious. Basically, SpongeBob starts biting the nails of his therapist, who has a giant live action hand. And therapy for my therapy. Personally, I didn't find this scene any grosser than the rest of the episode. It actually felt much weirder to me seeing him gnawing on Sandy's nails. But it has some redeeming pictures. For example, Patrick isn't as annoying as he is in mid-season SpongeBob. And it's not nearly as gross as something like the Splinter. Plus, he calls Sandy when things get out of hand. So he's not being stupid mid-season SpongeBob. And as someone with OCD, you can certainly emphasize with someone having a bad habit. So this one's just an early match. But you know, I think Sandy sums it up pretty well when SpongeBob starts biting his nails from the inside of his mouth. Ugh. And for number nine. SpongeBob what? Um Is it possible to help keep our online platform safe from cyber threats? So we can better protect our customer data? Comcast brother. Comcast business. It's not just possible, it's happening. Smooth jazz, a bikini bottom. According to the Scumball Wiki, this is one of the hyper-infamous Spongebob episodes. It's like super infamous, but it's collected all seven super emeralds and gotten 50 rings. And looking at it, yeah, I get its reputation. From the get-go, I just couldn't stand this episode. And reviewers didn't much care for it either. For example, Mathematics 101 kept his review short and simple. Smooth jazz at bikini bottom equals height. Everything was going so well up until they threw in Patrick. All the time, and Patrick is an especially unlikable character. Patrick really wasn't welcomed by Eric's episode much. He really came off as obnoxious and selfish here. The episode would have been a lot more enjoyable if not for him and his stupidity. Two stars! And I agree. Patrick almost single-handedly ruins it. Look at this annoying fellow. I do not like that Patrick star. I do not like him, Sam I am. His voice actor's good here, but the character Patrick is a pain in the rear, and I would not miss him should he disappear. From start to finish here, Squidward has everything important to him taken away from him. He starts happy because he's got a ticket to the Kelby G Jazz concert. But then, of course, Patrick randomly eats it. No reason, more consequences, he just randomly eats it. But fortunately, SpongeBob manages to win two tickets and generously invites Squidward. So they go to the concert, but of course, somehow, Patrick gets in despite having no money and no tickets. He then proceeds to beat Squidward's tickets again. Because I guess it was so funny the first time, because it just made Squidward happy, and he certainly can't have that. Very kindly, SpongeBob gives his VIP pass to Squidward, and, yep, you guessed it, Patrick eats it. It's not only stupid, it's painfully predictable. Within minutes, Squidward has the concert interrupted, has his seat stolen, and he's thrown out by security. No matter how much I see it, I just can't find Squidward suffering funny. And because I guess they just needed to kill more time, we get filler as Squidward desperately begs to try and see his idol backstage. But of course, his idol likes SpongeBob, who does play the ukulele damn well. But you know, I think we're about done with this sad fest. But I love you this Number eight. The oh boy. I think I've heard a little bit about this. This episode is really not appreciated. It's a relatively recent episode Weird. too, from 2019. The reviewers on IMDb for this episode were not friendly, consistently scoring 1 out of 10. Ooh. The nitwitting is something only nitwits would enjoy. Derpy wasn't much nicer. This Disgusting! This is just, just toilet humor for children! DS summed this review up like this. Very bad episode! 
so stupid. These should make episodes white palms. One reviewer even thought it was disturbing. It's dirty. The entire episode seems like it's making fun of the disabled. Confused face. And while I do get the same confused face gross out issue, which seemed to be the main of the complaints. Because frankly, I watched this episode in full for the first time, and I never want to ever watch this episode again. The best word that I can describe this episode with is gross. Holy cow, is this episode gross. <laughs> Stunned by SpongeBob literally having his brain removed. In a gross out scene that definitely falls into the uncomfortable territory, followed by gratuitous drool scenes, and SpongeBob then proceeds to drink or a jar of the spit in a scene that literally makes me nauseous thinking about it. Why is that drink? SpongeBob is introduced to these nitwit characters by Patrick. And they continue to spread havoc and terrorize the city. Like, where are the police during this nitwit city attack? They arrest Puff for just dropping a single piece of paper, yet they don't arrest these guys for dumping garbage out of the cans and causing chaos in the city. Uh, at least Sandy comes to clean up the mess of it. I swear she makes any episode better. Nitwitting is pretty straightforward. Sandbagging and gross out is the name of the game here. And it's understandable people find this one a slog to get through. I'll be happy to never watch it again. Seven lucky seven. Waiting, huh? I'm everybody's host, founder and head chef of Senorita. Without being able to connect mobily with my customers on social media or through point of sales, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah, literally nothing happens in that episode. I remember that one. And just absolutely bullies Patrick. Horrible and very mean spirited episode. It was also recommended to me 
which is literally just SpongeBob holding down a doorbell for half a minute straight with nothing else happening. Oh my god. I do hope someone laughed at that joke because that was long. What is he even doing? He's not blind and Pops is clearly there at the door waiting for. Him. But you know what I actually liked about this episode? Weirdly, Patrick. He's strangely calm and eloquent in this episode. That sounds delightful. I swear, his IQ jumps like 50 points to bringing his total IQ to fit. Sandbagging with serious gross ads, and you get yourself a super hated hyper infamous SpongeBob episode. Well, it's like they always say back in the old country, lad. What's that? No, no, I'm country. And what's at number four? Face freeze. Face freeze. Face freeze. Oh my god, I remember this one. This one scared me as a kid. The chill. In face freeze, they made disturbing faces. And yeah, that's about all we get. SpongeBob and Patrick make a bet to see who can hold a quote unquote funny face the longest. But as a result, their faces freeze in place. I can't move my face at all. Oh, I can't move my face either. Alright, we get it. Seriously, this episode is about as complex as hearing a goose honk at you for 10 minutes. Only what's touching it? And just more annoying, gooses are lost. We have another for the ranks of the hyper in the scumbob episodes. The scumbob reasons being that it's boring and disturbing, and I can agree that some of these faces get kind of uncomfortable to continuously look at. But interestingly, a lot of people are very split on this episode. It's certainly got people who vehemently hate it, but it also has a small following of people who like the episode, such as Sage Broder. To be honest, I thought it was funny. Followed by multiple less forgiving reviews, such as these. SpongeBob Nightmare Fuel, worst episode of SpongeBob. It's Boring, and it's not even funny. It's like saying I rocked in my chair a hundred times, and it's immediate funny. I'm okay, right? The phone box. Stop making the phone box go to the crusty crab so much. Thank you, number three. Penny Forge. Penny Forge. season six began. This was among its first real garbage pile episodes. It's maddeningly slow paced. And plot contrivances ahoy. Please, tell me more. I hope someone out there finds Krabs being money grubbing funny, because that's all he'll be doing for the next 11 minutes. I can't personally call this one offensively bad. It's just too dull to be offensive. But let's see what people on the internet thought. Well, I agreed most with Waluigi Cart's comments. This is the first episode that's terrible from beginning to end. I get what they mean. From beginning to end, it feels like we're being shown visual noise. Crab slowly empties SpongeBob's pockets. Dang him by the legs until his brain falls out. Then the two just spend a little more filler time chasing his brain around the crusty crab. Because apparently Spongy's brain is a spider now. Oh. <laughs> and Squidward isn't even just born in this episode. That would be interesting. In this, he's just dead inside. Me too. You think we should walk out back to investigate? Never. You might as well replace him with a Right. Yeah, he's pretty much down in that episode. I don't remember this one. But at 11 minutes, season 6 episodes are just torturously long. It wouldn't be so bad if they had anything to say, but they're just so bad. This has to be among the most boring episodes of SpongeBob I've ever seen. I'm sorry, I just said the minutes. Garces. What did other people think of this? Well, some people gave it just below average reviews. Second worst episode, after Space Freeze, F minus. Honestly, this episode was barely mentioned by my community, but I made a weasel call and included it because personally, I can't stand it. Number two, Big Sister Sam. Did you know Patrick has a big sister called Sam who sounds exactly like him? You, Sister Sam. Here, we once again step into the ultra-infamous SpongeBob episodes, which I'm assuming are more infamous than Hyper, because Ultrasonic is more powerful than Hypersonic, and I'm assuming that's how this works. I don't know. They're not loved either way. According to the Scumball Wiki, it's considered a Scumball episode because Sam tortures everybody and breaks their homes. She kind of does. Just absolutely torture everybody. Let's see what's going on.
Yes! Unacceptable! Conditions! How many, how many seasons does Adventure Time even have? I have no idea. My sister was, like, addicted to that. Brother Gucci, no, please don't. Not that, not that ugly stuff. How could people hate that? That was brilliant. For an infamous episode, I laughed a lot at this. And that's it. Now on to the dishonorable mentions. Choir Boys. Ah oh dear, this Woodward episode has a horrendous reputation. And it's definitely among what I consider the worst Squidward episodes. Yes, go, keep going. Slow paced and just killing time endlessly. Squidward needs to get to his audition, and with SpongeBob's help, he'll make sure to take forever to do it. <laughs> Yours, mine, and mine. Patrick is known as a bad character, mainly because of episodes like these. But here, he becomes hyper selfish. And more than ever, this episode leaves me pondering the question why did SpongeBob put up with Patrick? Patrick, that's my money. Have you learned nothing about sharing? Driven to tears. People tend to say yours and mine and mine is two friends bickering. But driven to tears is two friends being absolute scumbags to each other. Somehow, we've never explained how, Patrick gets his license. He wins a car and then rubs it in SpongeBob's face. But SpongeBob is also pretty awful back to Patrick. Officer, it is my civic duty to report that the black rock this vehicle is speeding. Why don't you attack him with your radar gun? You know, the series has just never built a particularly compelling argument for SpongeBob spending his time there. Sandy's right there at the tree to You're her best friend, she's waiting for you. Don't. Here, Patrick unknowingly has something in his pocket that Gary wants. So Gary starts. That sounds so bad. Patrick is, as usual, a cold hearted, horrible friend. He basically steals Gary right from under SpongeBob's nose and then is somehow still a scumbag about it. I call this one a because I just can't stand it. To love a Patrick. According to the Scumbob Wiki, this falls into the hyper infamous category. SpongeBob gets way too physically intimate with a burger, and we basically watch his descent into insanity as he begins to date the hunk of meat. Now, he's free to do what he wants. But I do still think maybe it's time SpongeBob starts at least looking for a girlfriend. Ahem. Anyway, little yellow book. Squidward finds SpongeBob's diary and he starts reading it out loud and asking friends. Squidward is a jerk in this episode and that's about the sum of it. Moving on. Score, yeah, Squidward is an absolute tool. That actually got classified ultra infamous by the Scumbob Wiki. 
Personally, I've never found the episode that bad. Thanks. Hours of work condensed into mere minutes. They actually don't. Almost oh, days, weeks of work, all condensed within a few hours. Right there, clearing out. That could have took me all day. It took me about half an hour. If I can build the roads, I can imagine. Well, if I can build the roads, that uh, sparks the imagination, and I can start going off from there. What's number one? What is the most hated episode? Bunch of uh, not that bad. All I gotta do is just get the what's called. Just all you gotta do is get a beacon and then get a uh, haste two, and it's pretty much fast. I'd almost say it's almost faster. It's almost faster to use that than traditional explosives in this in creative. That's right. I did a top list inside a top list. I seem to be getting weird. And for accuracy purposes, this will include ones I've mentioned before in previous videos. I'll give a more brief, up to date version of what I think of it now. Five to seven years later. Number six, stuck in the brain. This could well be the most hated episode of all. This is not going well. What people seem to hate the most about this episode was the Oh boy. Oh god, this one. What a time that um, Squirrel got his toenail ripped off. Oh, that one was, was one of the most disgusting moments ever. I hate splinters. Seeing SpongeBob get a festering splinter. You know, I'm seeing it get horribly infected by his idiot friend Patrick. It's just a total roast out up to the tenth degree. <laughs> Number four, Demolition Doofus. A hyper infamous plus torture episode. But I call it ultra infamous. Because, fun fact, this is my personal choice for my least favorite SpongeBob episode. Why? I just can't stand Puff's torture episodes. I really can't. Deeply unpleasant to me seeing this poor woman tormented endlessly. Suddenly, in newer seasons, she's a lot more well treated. Anyway, IMDb describes the episode as Mrs. Puff's finally finds a use for SpongeBob's reckless crime. And then it's the Russian Derby. That is about the most sugar focused outright wrong description I've ever heard. Perhaps a more accurate description. That those are measurement markings. Basically, when someone manipulates another person to make them question. Basically, if you don't know, watch this. But look very carefully. Space three, space three, space three. So right now, if you don't look, if you don't, uh, if you can't see it, this curved can be turned to a square. But square cornered double lane or square cornered quadruple lane roads are just stupid. So that's why. I had it measured and I made a curve. So look, three, 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 three. See how there's three lines. And it goes down. It goes down there. Everything is put up to a standard. And then this right here. Hmm. Give me a second. Hmm. Oh, yeah, they're definitely going to be removed. Oh, okay, okay. 
I was a little scared there for a second. I thought this was okay. So right here, it goes from red, and I actually, I actually switched to gray. So now the gray is where it's supposed to go, and put an invisible thing right there. Now that goes along with that, and this was measured, and then you can see that the and here's where it gets the lines road. So it's all standard. Is that now with with that um, put in the mind, you can uh, and these roads are made like you can literally go around the world and you could directly connect it and it would still be the same, equally space, equally equally distance. For instance, but it's hard to fully summarize just how hated this episode is. Why everyone I think I have never met someone who actually likes this episode. You probably know this story. Patrick's fake parents come to visit and he tries to impress them by asking SpongeBob to act stupid. It's silly and just be mad at him. And just as Rekha frustrating to watch. And, and don't worry, I'll keep this warm for you. And next are the two absolutely lowest rated episodes I could find in all of SpongeBob. One Force Mail. You've probably heard of it before. It comes in at a shockingly low score of 3.5 out of 10 on IMDb. Perhaps finds out that Plankton's afraid of whales. So he dresses Oh, this one was a. This one, he literally just tortures. What makes it awful? I mean, there's the obvious maliciousness of crabs in this episode. And how discomforting it is to see Plankton slowly sent into madness and fear. But interestingly, people also noted that it doesn't make sense in the story either. Kai Money pointed at this out in his review. Plankton has met Pearl before, and he wasn't scared of her. Well, yeah. I mean, I know SpongeBob isn't exactly known for its plot consistency, but it seems like a giant enough plot hole to drive a mad truck through. <laughs> And finally, for number one, a pal for Gary. Yep, as far as I can see, this is the absolute lowest rated SpongeBob. Oh, I get because um, SpongeBob was completely oblivious to how bad that thing was. With an abysmal score of three point two. Oh no, I'm too lazy. That's fair. SpongeBob brings Gary a pet that terrorizes him. Yep. Even IMDb can't fill really up this description. What's fascinating to me about the viewer responses on this episode is just how horrified they sound when describing this. For example, The horror! The horror! Oh my god! Dreadful! And finally, Pal for Gary is the worst thing ever! Well, personally, I'd say unvaccinated smallpox was a bit worse, but you know, but you can certainly see that this episode is worth not just in the but a freaking crater on the history of SpongeBob. Yeah, but that is the extent of our journey through Bikini Bottom. I would like you to step back into SpongeBob world again in the future. Please do let me know. Any recommendations for SpongeBob videos you'd like to see me do? I do like chatting food, restaurants. Oh crap! And other I just I must. But I understand that back in the day, some people subscribed. The tragic downfall of Amy's Bacon Company, dude. This is the most infamous restaurant ever. Okay. Uh, re re uh a little bit of a. Oh. Yours is well. That's great to hear. Anyway, a little bit of actually, if I got the announcements on my channel, I will not be, um, in about the second half of June, I will be absent from streaming. I actually got some big places I'm going. The first, I'm going to go to the West Coast, visiting San Francisco, and then for three days from the 27th, 8th, and, no, 28th, 9th, and 30th, I will be visiting, um, not June, I'll be visiting the Kalahari Resort. In Wisconsin Dells. Oh man, I just want to move to Wisconsin. Not just because it's probably better than Illinois, but the gun laws. No registration. No void cards. I mean, if you don't know in Illinois, there's a thing called a void card for or firearm owner's identification. It is an absolutely unconstitutional thing. No other state has such a thing. So you have to carry this stupid little plastic guard around in order to fire, or in order to use guns. Because guess what? You know what's going to stop criminals? I'm sorry for getting into that one of those rants. You know what's going to stop criminals? Not police, not the military, no. 
a plastic credit card with the letters FOID on it. That's what's going to stop criminals. Someone's going to do something about it. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, I was about to. I, I'm glad I didn't enter with some of the songs we listened to last night. <laughs> I hope you crash into a bus. Anyway, um. Holy crap. So, it has a lot of things changed in my city. I just got this part done. It's gonna be a little few uh, modernistic apartments. The only complaint I have about this city is I wish there was a little bit more roads. Where's the star? Wait, is this the one with the stranger thing? Nope, it's all new. The other one is actually still here, but I want to do something better. Because look at this. Look at the amount of landscape I have to deal with. So, do you want to, like, play, like... Do you want me to play, like, a battle, or do you want me to do uh, something? I don't have a controller here. I'm gonna turn on. It's fine. You can do whatever you want. Mm. Now that chest... Oh, you don't have to do that. All you gotta do is just... I do need to buy new controllers. That way my people, like, anybody that comes here can actually, you know, enjoy life. Yeah, but... It's Hmm. Why didn't you respond to my text? Oh, sorry. I, I don't really respond to text a whole lot. I asked you, what time do you get off work? Oh. Is it okay if I can come over before work? Oh, whoops. So, uh... Uh, what's it called? Uh... Look up Project X. What's that? It's a movie and it's really funny. It's about these kids in high school who throw this humongous party. Wait, Obama shoots the Steyer Og at full auto? What's it called? Steyer STG 77 aka the AUG. Dude, I think everybody just knows about the AUG. I love the AUG. The AUG's pretty cool. Cursed gun images. Mm -mm, no. Cursed gun images. I love this series. Gun images is where you guys just take all of the random shit you find on the internet and send it to me. Whether that be stupid guns, guns that have been bubbed into the ground, or guns that just need to be put out of the world. I'm not really about that. You can stay till 4:30. Anyhow, I got a whole new batch of submissions, so let's go over them together. Starting off, we have what I think might be our first submission of cursed ammo. Images. So without further ado, let's start the way I always do. What? With just the tip. <laughs> oh. That is a dick. I can <laughs> <laughs> maximum penetration. When it comes to customer satisfaction, <sighs> oh my hard, god. Hard to beat. I, I, I've got a couple more. In all seriousness, though, I think these are a joke. I don't think this is a real product, considering the packaging itself says a nine millimeter Parabellum. UK slang for for a dick. No. You cheeky Brits. Never thought I'd see a type of ammunition where part of the reloading process is circumcision. Nine millimeter parabellum. When you're trying to prove that you're not shooting blanks. All right, I'm, I am now done. Okay, no, I'm not one more. This brings a whole new meaning to cocking your gun. All right. I'm done. <laughs> All right, next one. <laughs> Whatever this is. What is that? President of Carrie Handel. It's like an AR. Looks like we actually have a. Like uh, an AR platform, but 3D printed. So it's a 3D printed with, lower. With an, a FAMAS top. Just long boy, Carrie Handel. 
It looks like he kind of married the G36 style, like carry handle integral. Yeah, G36, thing. I get where he's going. Moss kind of thing going on. Also 3D printed, but still. Weren't you crack it for the Hamas in Fortnite? Shit, you could put like four hands on the carry handle and make it like a fucking team exercise. See, I'm not happy with what you are doing to the imagery of the Hamas. There will be consequences. Moving on, this one actually. It looks like a BFH and Finn. Here we have a Russian meme of me looking at an AK that has got a lot going on. It looks like an it looks like an AR, an AK, and a VSS, like Vince Vitres, whatever it's called. I don't know what they're called. It looks like one of those, but it boils into an unholy. But it looks like they've done like a replica VSS stock. Yeah, VSS. Magazine and the rounds that are just floating around the photo. It looks like it's chambered nine by thirty nine. Mom, can we have VSS? No, no it's, not, it's at home. Now, it's at home. Text says, so was I. So I put it through Google Translate. I doubt this is correct, but Google Translate said, I can't decide if it's a gun or not a gun. Doesn't quite seem right, so if there's any native Russian speakers that would like to correct that in the comments, please let me know, because I'm kind of curious. Either way, not terrible execution on this one. We actually did our own version of an AK to 9x39 a while back. Check this out, how to remove lo logs very easily. I'm curious why they won't listen such a long I'm at 39's a slow boy, you don't need that. Shorter, mo better. No, oh, babe, I prefer the SPR. The big ones hurt me. Now, turn to go from Russia and back to the UK for a moment. Of course, as you've all heard, Queen Elizabeth II has passed. Not a real big fan of any royal family, but definitely not the ones that have connections to Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> things. But we do have this photo of the Queen shooting the famous and kind of infamous L85. Oh, God. Based LA5, of course, having a lot of its own problems and being somewhat of a cursed gun energy in itself. So hopefully with the passing of the torch, the new generation of Royal Guards will be able to carry something that doesn't suck. Eh, a man can dream. Unless she redeploys after beating Princess Diana in the Gulag. Now, there have been a lot of stupid politicians that have been saying for a while that the Second Amendment in the U.S. only applies to muskets and not any sort of modern fire. It seems that a few of you guys have been preparing for that interpretation and making some upgrades. Here we have... The tactical musket. Here we have what appears to be a tactical what the belt hell? held on by only the finest of industrial strength and zip ties. <laughs> that looks like some yeah, it's going to fall out. Red coats in the dark. Now, if you recall, at the end of the last cursed gun images video, we teased what I called the most cursed AK I have ever seen. What the fuck is that? I actually saw that gun online, bought it, and proceeded to do an entire video talking about how bad it was. It's it's not great. Truly, to this day, I still think probably the most cursed AK build I have ever seen. But I said we might do a video fixing it, bringing this bad boy up to former glory as a beautiful Yugo AK. And as always, I'm a man of my word. So if this cursed gun images video gets 100,000 likes, we will do a video taking this bad boy, tearing it completely down, back to the basic parts kit, and rebuilding it as a beautiful gun that is capable of being, and not a safety hazard to whoever's holding it. So here we have a submission of uh, what looks like a model, you know, from back in the day, holding a, gy a, a gyro device. jet. Looks like some sort of weird fucking toy gun, right? No way that that thing is actually real. It is. It's a, di it's a gyro jet or pistol. As it turns out, this is actually from James Bond, and that pistol, while it looks like a little you know, kid's toy made out of bent sheet metal, it's a gyro jet. Very exotic and rare. It is a exotic. The gyro jet. I want. I don't care if I can't shoot that gun. I want it. Is there, have you heard of a, a gyro jet? A gyro jet is a gun that shoots. You you know what it shoots? Yeah. Rockets. The gyro jet shoots rockets, and it each round is about sixty dollars. About roughly six times more expensive than a 50 caliber BMG, and those who shoot it, like, are almost seen as spoiled in my opinion because they are. They also have some really good guns. Basically, getting rid of case ammunition instead using rocket propelled projectiles. This is the world's smallest rocket launcher, and I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty fucking neat. Maybe even something that we should do for the channel. You know what, I'm going to double up. I'm going to double up on the like goal. If you guys get us to 100,000 likes on this video, 
I'll hunt down a gyro jet. Can't be that hard, right? Right? So yeah, if you want to see one of these bad boys fire, I recommend you go ahead and subscribe. If you're enjoying Cursed Gun Images, we do this every now and again. We also do series like Darwin Awards and, of course, Gun Meme Review. We also do some cool range videos, including, hopefully coming up, a gyro jet. So if you want to be part of the AKG cult, I mean uh, AKG nation, uh, go ahead and subscribe. God, I want a gyro jet now. Now, I know this is Cursed Gun Images and not Gun Meme Review, but this one's kind of a meme, but it also has a cursed gun image in it, so... Yeah, it works. When you tell her you're going to destroy that ass and she just laughs. When I said I was looking for a plug for hand grenades, that's... Oh my god, it's a grenade, right. but it's a... This brings high <laughs> you're of age, I would recommend checking out Arms List. I actually remember using Arms List all the time when I was first getting into guns. It's a great way to see deals from local and or meet up with private persons for buying and selling if that's legal in your area. They're an awesome sponsor of the channel. We obviously can't link them on a YouTube video, but you can go check them out at Arms List. We appreciate their support. Now back to some cursed shit. So up next we have a photo that is apparently from a gun buyback. I present to you the Pipe Gun P90, also known as the Pipe 90. Probably. It's always funny seeing the shit that people build to turn in a gun buyback. Oh, shit that's technically fire that would cost like 80 bucks to build to get a $200 Walmart gift card or whatever the fuck they're giving out. Draining the pockets of anti-gun activists one 3D print at a time. Oh god, what is that? It's a slam fire. So it's a pipe a shotgun? Bottom, what you do is you, uh, it's two pipes inside of each other. You push that back, you slam it back. It's a shotgun slip shell sitting in the first. There's a firing pin at the very, very back of the tube. So by slamming it rearward, you're firing the shotgun shell. Now, a word of advice when it comes to building improvised homemade pipe guns at home. Maybe, like, fucking don't. <laughs> this next one is from Brazil. Police confiscated what looks to be somehow a cruder looty than the looty. Oh my oh, god, god, that's awesome! Kind of impressive though, and what's weird is it that, that doesn't even look like a detachable magazine. It looks like it's just part of the gun. It looks like a garbage it's AA-12. Up. And also the octagonal barrel that just looks like a nut at the end, like a brass nut. Just goes to Have show you when you get a hard weapons, people will improvise. What do you mean? Arc survival. Lately? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, not no. Really? We should. You know they're coming out with Arc Two soon. Ah, uh, it, it's if it's not this year, it's next year. Execute fifth. Oh my god, I hate, I hate the new, um, well, I mean, that command sucks. And overcome. And then get confiscated and then end up on cursed gun images. Now this guy here's got the cop gun from hell. The very, very tactical blue camouflage really helps out. I don't actually know where this photo is from, but what is killing is the contrast. You got a super crude tube gun that you probably wouldn't even pick up if you were playing Fallout in one hand. And then his modern tactical pouches and shit over in front of his belt. Yeah, I love how he camouflages his pouches. Meanwhile, his gun. Um... Next for improvised, we've got... Well, this. The what is that? Shell, complete with a tripod and ACOG. And a hammer and screwdriver to you know, set her off. You know, typically in the Middle East when they were building IEDs out of old artillery shells, it didn't require manual operation of the actual... Oh my god, that is... Using cell phones and wires and shit. This IED here appears to be all manual. I guess they just draw straws for whoever has to be the one to set it off. They expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. So now on pistols, I present to you the most tactical Glock of all time. As in the stock four-driven laser... Let's see. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, we got a police stock with a buffer tube fitted with an AR-15 stock, we got an extended magazine, we got an extended mag with a, a TLR-1 laser and um, light combo, we also got a sideways angled grip with an AR-15 base sight. You know, on this one, considering there's no front sight on that gun for the carry handle sight to be useful, but that's okay, I have a feeling he's not going to be using sights anyway. That's what the laser's for. Kind of laughing, thinking like, oh, you know what? 
this person probably doesn't have a tax stamp to make this an SBR, considering there's obviously a stock and a foregrip on it. And I thought, well, the vertical foregrip isn't exactly vertical, is it? It's at an angle. So I wonder if that's the law. And then I realized SBR shit doesn't fucking matter at all, because this thing has a fucking auto steer. Got a little switch on the side of the spy that makes it a happy block. Oh no! Oh god! I know what that is now. That is a um, it's a very special modification to turn your Glock into an illegal automatic pistol. Those are called Glock switches, if I'm not wrong. And those are a Democrat's worst nightmare. Glock 18, or this is probably going through the latter. But who knows? It's a crazy world. Now, I'm not a big fan you know, the people who, like, carry those, like, really tiny, like, 22 revolvers in their pocket on the day-to-day. -day. I'll get into why I don't like it, probably in this next episode of the Darwin Awards, frankly. But the only advantage that it would have is that it's super tiny, super easy to conceal in your pocket, and you can just carry it on the day-to-day. -day. Well, this guy said, fuck that. I oh, my God. A tiny pocket side. Let's see, an AR-15, um... Of a fucking AR lower. An, yeah, yeah. AR-15 grip. You realize that Colt makes both AR-15s and revolvers. Voila! It's AR-15 guard hand, an AR-15 buffer stock attached to a Smith & Wesson pistol. When you have to have your Marty Robbins big iron at 6, but Black Hawk down water at 7. Considering that long sight radius you now get on this revolver with those, uh, those old M4 sights, the nice C-clamp you can get on that handguard, and the stability of the stock, this thing is the perfect killing machine. I think the only thing that can make this thing more deadly is some dick bullets. Mm. Well, that closes up this episode of Cursed Gun Images. What was your favorite? Totally unhinged gun images. I show you the USCCA's free concealed carry. I love that. That is hilarious. I love gun what images. A terrible day to have eyes. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother, mother lovers? Welcome back <laughs> to another episode of Cursed Gun Images. Okay. Haven't had one of these in a while. Oh no! Yeah, this is the segment where you guys find some of the most heinous shit from all over the internet, whether it be photos of guns, uh, Bubba guns, whatever. You send them over to me, and then I break them down and respond to them. It's actually been a while since we've done one of these videos, and you guys have not stopped sending me content for this. So we have some particularly bad ones this episode, so cheers to that. You got me some liquid courage. And with that, let's go ahead and dive right on in. Let's start out with some of my favorites. Police seizures. Not like the police having a seizure. Guns seized by the police. Oh. How about this one? Oh, this God. Department. This looks like a completely home built sheet metal. A Mac 11. Machine gun. Or Mac 10. They conducted a traffic stop on March 14, 2023. I lo okay, I love how the. I, I, this is a garbage Mac 10. I love how there's, like, there's pipes right next to it, dude. That just shows you that it was built by a meth addict. This Mac looks like it's seen better days. Yeah, they took a Mac 10 lower and clearly put some 3D printed bullcrap on the top. Oh my god. Do you know about mail CSGO skins? Kind of. Do you know, there, there was a recent incident where a drug lord bought like $1.5 million in CSGO skins. This is an Uzi? And then his account, like he was trying to launch it. And then his account got banned, so apparently his stuff got like locked into his account forever. Dude. That actually sucks when you really think about it. That idiot literally just made everything inaccessible. Nope. Like you can't trade it. And Let's guess what that was. I'm trying to think of like CSGO skins are so cool. Like I love opening cases because you never know what you're gonna get. The rarest CSGO skin is 1.5 mil. Or no, it's a blue. It's a blue gem, which means there's a one in one thousand chance. So to get a knife, it's like a one in four hundred chance. To get a karambit. It's another one in like 32 chance to get it, and then it goes even rarer. There's a one in 1,000 chance that your karambit is a blue gem, and then it could be like case hardened and has to be factor in you, and it's completely blue on one side. And the owner of this, it's like a one in one million chance. There's only one in existence. It's been around for like 10 years. 
Someone offered him one point two million dollars in that cryptocurrency. Crypto. That's how you say no. Bitcoin. Oh my God. If and he said no. That's low. It is low. Because it's like super, super, and it was used by a pro in the tournament. No, no Bitcoin. That's stupid. That's like offering somebody like what's called. A, and the currency changes. That's stupid. That was a, that was a nice try, but. Nice try, good fry. I love that next to it is a homemade pistol magazine that very clearly does not go to this weapon. I just want to know if this fucking thing works, dude. It's even got a threaded barrel with a thread pitch that does not look like it takes any sort of gun accessories. So I'm just real fucking curious on this one. Direct to oil filter thread. I don't know if anybody's made this joke so far, but I've begun to affectionately refer to this one as the Crack 10. The so Crack 10. Too easy. This next one is courtesy of the Placer County Sheriff's Department. Now, you guys might remember from a previous Oh, episode, God, that's awful. Madison, a completely home-built, I, I guess technically a gun. Don't do drugs, kids. And if you do, no heroin or meth, but it seriously can fuck you up. You're going to have coin this one, the Smith & Madison, but this next one, I feel like... It's the bill a little better. This one looks like an actual Smith & Wesson handgun. That oh my god. Yeah, put your finger up a little bit higher and oh, you're gonna ha not have it anymore. Because clearly every shitty street 9mm handgun needs an optic rail on the top. Because, you know, if you attach a red dot to something, the bullet's gonna go where the dot goes. No matter how much of a 20 degree angle it happens to be sitting at. So depending on the distance, you're going to be assassinating the shit out of the dirt in front of whatever you're trying to get. On top of that, I love the modified AR-15 grip that he's got right up there in the front, which, as it turns out, is a vertical grip on a on a pistol. Um, which is illegal. That's illegal. I think that becomes an NFA item, like an AOW, as soon as you do that. So now on top of whatever crime you've committed against, you know, Samuel Colt and John Moses Browning, uh, I made a pistol this ugly, you've also committed a literal felony, which adds to the charges of possession of whatever the hell substance you were on while you were making this. Now this next one may not be from a police seizure, but it is from a gold mine of current judgments. I'm referring to, of course, Boomer Facebook groups. And on top of that, it's in New Jersey. I oh boy. My slide for an optic, but this is his first time doing it. Oh my god. Or is this a good height? And does anyone have templates for the holes? Should you go deeper? Yeah, probably. Just go ahead and milk Dude, the shake up the entire body. top half it's of his pistol. Put in the trash now. Oh my I'm god. Look. He shaved the entire like half a yeah, third of his pistol yeah, off. the rest of that slide away Oh my god. Oh, How does this so work? Understand this premise, but when your buddy says he can do it cheaper, that is rarely a good choice. Why buy once, cry once, when you can just buy this and cry for the entire duration of your ownership? See, the thing about a mill is it's kind of like one of those magic monkeys moments, right? It's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So if you have no idea what to ask it to do, good luck, have fun. I would bet thirty dollars this gentleman's still trying to weld a picket to the ground for that. Now gonna have to prepare you for these next couple. You see, there weren't stuff that was originally sent in, there were just stuff that I happened to find on Gun Broker. I have a crippling gun buying addiction, you guys know this by now. And by other happenstance, sometimes you come across some heinous shit. Such as this next one, the STG-44 at home. You know what's what? than all these sketchy curved guns? Being unprotected online. The average person has a ton of personal information available mm -hmm. online. The STG-44, what's so, so bad about this? Look too bad. Kind of like an unrestored classic car. That four you almost took home from the bar the other night. If you look into this... Oh, God. Okay. I should have to tell you, this is not an STG-44. This is like an HK clones. This is a C93 Sporter. So think about like a, a roller lock, uh, like a G3 or a set mate or something like that, but in 5.56. Five, this gentleman locked it up to look like an STG-44 by absolutely Hulk smashing with probably an actual STG-44 handguard onto this fucking thing. Like the barrel assembly actually looks fairly legit. Like that gas lock, front sight lock, that all looks like real STG-44. The handguard and everything, it looks like the front assembly. It belongs to an STG. Just looks like he took all those components from an STG-44, took a C93 and just went, now kid, with a hammer. There was a hammer. Hmm. I hate this. The more I look at it. I think that's the top. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I seriously did just notice that. That's the top of like an AK rear sight block. Let me find something real quick. 
might be a little hard to see because of the Zenico furniture I've got on this one, but it looks like a rear sight block of uh, the AK right here, uh, welded onto the top of it. And then just like a look alike SCG-44 stock on the rear. Something what? relating to an SCG-44 grip panel on the, the pistol grip there. This is a C-93 that identifies as a Sterling Bear. And it has several <laughs> platform affirming surgeries since then to reflect that. Of course, this is an abomination, but I don't blame the guy for wanting an SCG-44. We actually just finished the rebuild on our SCG-44, and we're probably going to be doing a video on that fairly soon. So if you guys want to see me do a full breakdown on a real World War II German STG-44, go ahead and subscribe. YouTube has a habit of unsubscribing a lot of people from the channel. So if you want to make sure you stay up to date on the new videos that we do, go ahead and double check real quick and go ahead and hit that notification bell while you're there. And you know what? If you're feeling frisky, leave a like. Either way, thank you for your service. That's not the only horrible mismatch I found on the road. Feast your eyes on the P-50 Star Wars it, prop gun. It looks like... Okay, so we got... Uh, let's look, let's examine this. So we got a... Uh... Oh, Christ, where do we even start? We got a, um, a PPSH stock with a comp point. We have a, what looks like to be some sort of, like, oh, oh, God, there's a P90, there's a P90 mag crammed into it. It looks, and then there's a, it looks like a part of a gyrojet pistol. And it, it, but it reminds me of like the PP two thousand Bison. Have you ever wondered what happens when you mesh together the Sedai of PPS forty three fifty two submachine gun with the Keltec P fifty? I sure as fuck haven't. But that's why we have people like this gentleman who dare to dream. And by that I mean literally just sell the top half of the Keltec P fifty zip tie. Keltecs are so weird looking. PPS forty three fifty two. I don't even know how that works. I love goat guns. I've always wanted one of these things. I don't know which ones though. Yeah. Does it look kind of dope? Guilty. Yeah, it does. It pulls off the Star Wars prop look pretty good. So I, you know what? I'm gonna give it a pass. I'm just hoping these were spare parts and there weren't two perfectly functional guns that were sacrificed for this thing. Don't know the next cursed gun broker find? Do you like trench shotguns? I don't know why I said that, kind of like, uh, do you like Huey Lewis in the news? Of course you do. Everybody likes trench shotguns. Then why wouldn't you want this custom Winchester model? Another AR-15 grip. Pistol grip pump shotgun. From 1919. It survived 104 years just to be bubbled in. I kind of heard that Sarah McLaughlin commercial, you know, in the arms of an angel, like playing in the background when I first fucking saw this. For just however the fuck much this weapon is selling for, you can take home a trench shotgun and put the actual stock back on. Now we'll move on to something that you guys have said. I can't figure out what I should do. To the Ukraine! Everybody likes cranks. Cranks are fucking rad. Everybody likes belt beds. Belt beds are even more rad. Well, let's not get carried away. Belt beds are really rad. What if you had a belt bed crank? Well, this crazy Ivan seems to have figured that out. What a, the uh, hell did he do? This guy made a belt fed AK platform? I don't know who needs to hear this, but this is a joke. There are so many people that are sending me this, like, Look at this belt fed 762 by 54 r crank off. Even in part of the video itself, like, he pans over and his buddy, like, just shows he took the bolt carrier group and recoil spring and shit out. Like, he just shoved the PKM belt through this thing and slammed the top cover down. It's funny to see, like, so many, like, terminally online motherfuckers that play too much Call of Duty and, like, whoa, he built a belt fed attachment for his AK. If you want a belt fed AK, it's 7.62 by 54 R. RPK? For you. It's, it's the PKM. Oh. About as close to I know, I know it's Mac, but, like, that sounds like an RK. Now, speaking of Ukraine, this next one is not from there. Looks like it could be, though, and I think that's what it was originally posted as, but I never saw it. It's introducing the riser to end all risers. Oh my god. So it's like attached to like an MG42 slash MG3. This is the kind of riser that you use for a red dot if you're one of those Camino cloners from Star Wars. I'm looking at it closer, I think he's actually got like a tech unit in front of that, like an IR laser unit. But judging by the kit of his friend and the fact that they're, you know, assaulting a queerly, you know, industrial looking building, 
And based on the fact that this looks, you know, 3D printed salad and really jank kind of thing that wouldn't survive NG42 recoil, I'm assuming this is air stuff. If I'm not correct, this is actually real from Ukraine. First of all, I'm sorry. Second of all, Ukraine is down bad, worse than I thought. Pretty sure it's fucking tape around the base, actually. But I saw this on Twitter, and I fucking love that place because the first thing that I saw as a response was this picture. Mankind was not ready for the internet. The only thing that would make this better is if this was actually combat footage. You post this epic assault on a compound defending your homeland just to get memed on on Twitter with a fucking mirrored crab claw Photoshop. 2023, man, it's a hell of a place. Next up, we have one that I've actually wanted to give a shout out to for a minute now. We just haven't done one of these in a while. Do so you guys remember on a very old episode that we talked about the. Oh, lever God, action Lever Action AK? Right? Something about the Soviet John Wayne kind of look. Is it a meme? Absolutely. But you know what we say here? Don't let your dreams eat you memes. Make your memes come true. So we have this guy on Instagram, Missile Peludo, who actually made a Lever Action AK from a Saiga style unconverted AK. Dude. I saw this original part uh, before I saw any of the rest of it, and I thought, like, oh, okay, we made, like, a functional, like, lever-looking thing on the bottom of the side guy. That's pretty cool, but, like, it doesn't actually work with the gun, right? And then I saw in a later video, it actually fucking works. It looks like you oh my the God. back of that lever there uh, that's pulling through the back of the bolt carrier. It's pulling the bolt carrier back to like That's so impressive. Which is kind of fucking neat. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Is it, is it the sturdiest setup? I don't know. Does it work? It appears to. I just hope he melted up the gas pedal. That'd be a little uncomfortable to be shooting that gun, and then as it's cycling, that lever's whipping back and forth at mock fuck. Is the concept cursed to sell? Probably. But at the same time, AK Smith to AK Smith, that's off to us. Sometimes in the sake of fun, you have to stop asking why and start asking why not. Until you get to this. Oh god, it's a toy AK. It looks like some stupid Call of Duty yeah. skin for AKs. 3D printed back there, and it looks like a parts kit, an AK parts kit that was very crudely welded together um, where the rivets were supposed to be. On top of being, you know, brightly colored and rusty as shit, and apparently painted at one point. Oh, 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 bonus points for the tactical hose clamp on top of that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hose clamp. Plenty of weapon lights. Pocket flashlight. Steel case with the charging handle, not all together first, just in this kind of setup, and you know, it adds to the, to the flare. I love that the dust cover also has very obvious welds on the top of the tube where he tried to probably weld an optic rail or something like that, like a pick rail. Yeah, okay, that was a pretty good reminder of why sometimes we ask why and not why not. As a little bit of a bonus, you guys might remember the me and Cody uh, down at Nashville recently. Hung out with a couple of cool cops who did some cool things and saved some lives. And with that in mind, I present to you the ultimate unstoppable force meets immovable object. I present to you the Caltech Sub 2000 with an LVPO on it. What? It's like fucking divided by zero. If you don't get that joke, stay innocent. Those last couple of guns weren't too bad. I feel like we blew our load too early, so to speak. I'm sure you guys can sympathize. But we should all the really curse guns right on top. There's no way at the very end we can top it with. Well, I, I, uh, I what the hell is that? There's a lot going on. Uh, Mac 11? Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah, I don't even know what's going on with it. If you have your own suggestions, be sure to send them in. But if you'd like to watch some of the other episodes of Curse Gun Images to make sure you're not sending in a duplicate, we've got the playlist down below where you can watch Curse Gun Images to your heart's content. We've got a lot of cool content coming up. we got a Darwin Awards video coming up, some cool range stuff. I've been waiting to show you guys. Super excited for it. So be sure to subscribe. And as always, I will see you sexy to mother lovers. Mm -hmm. in the next video. Curse guns that broke the internet. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers, and welcome back to another episode. Curse gun images. I know. So, so the thing is, as much as I love looking at your cursed internet dog shit, there's one thing in particular you guys have been sending me over and over, just flooding, and I mean flooding my inbox with. So of course, we're going to have to cover that, or else you guys would be horrifically disappointed. Plus, we figured we might as well give you some content because, let's face it, you guys aren't doing anything else on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Too harsh. So let's start with a video that you guys cannot seem to stop talking about. And honestly, I think this is something we might have covered a long fucking time ago at some point, but it's coming back up. Mostly because, of 
sensitive. It's going viral on TikTok. And we may or may not be able to include the audio because of TikTok music. They don't get but don't worry, you don't need audio to see how fucking bad this is. It just gets worse and worse. The world's first. Introducing the world's first. Bullpup. Belt fed. Belt fed. And you know where this is going if you've seen it. Lever gun. So Lever gun? You no, know, I'm not exactly a big fan of bullpups. I do, however, like lever guns. In fact, I own one in 44 Mega. And of course, you know, I've always been a fan of belt pads. But the idea of a belt fed, bull popped, lever gun, and 44 Magnum makes all of those things. This is going insanely viral on TikTok. <laughs> I've been sent this, no joke, I'm not kidding. Through, through Twitter, through Instagram, through email, all over. Oh my it's god. A few hundred times in the last few days. And I get it. I do have to give it to the designer, though. I know, I know, I probably, yeah, I hate to give credit, but I gotta give credit where credit's due. This doesn't look easy. Making a gun that's supposed to feed from a tube magazine feed from a belt? That's pretty fucking hard. Top that with completely changing the lever design, the thing that actually loads the cartridge, and pushing the lever further forward, all the way to the front of the gun, and having to run a linkage system to actually make that operate? You, sir, are a man of terrible taste. But excellent craftsmanship. I remember this floating around the internet like at least a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. But then it's TikTok and it's back, and apparently a bunch of people did not see it. If you're like me and you don't like TikTok, go ahead and subscribe. We actually do good content here. <laughs> Alright, we're okay. And if you do like TikTok, go ahead and subscribe anyway, because you're clearly entertained by anything. So go ahead and give it a shot. But still, as a whole, this kind of goes against my uh, personal constitution, and therefore I will tolerate it. Okay. Impressive. Like Dirty Harry's wet dream. I don't remember if I fired five rounds or all six. Doesn't matter though. Goddamn belt. I'm feeling pretty lucky. But now that we've gotten that out of the way, moving on the way from bad impressions, but we've got some actual cursed gun images for you guys. So it's been floating around the last couple of weeks. When you have a reenactment at one, but you want to buy. What is that? This appears to be a uh, Some... 1851 Colt. New one? Colt Army? Colt Army? reproduction one anyway. It can also be referred to as the classical looking Griswold and Gunnison pistol. It's a Civil War ball. At least it would have been had it not been for this uh, janky ass optic mount up top and the addition of an 8K. Underfolding stock. What? This would definitely be an illegal. Oh, okay, it is an AK underfolding stock. However, you know I'm not a pixel try block case. Yeah. Did you really hear a crazy story? That's crazy. I don't want to tell me about it. So they have in game currency called Skyblock points. And they have mayors. So, like, every real life week, a new mayor. A new mayor. I think, uh, like, I think Technoblade was one of the mayors at one point. Uh -huh. Yeah. And. One of the mirrors is Marina, it's a girl who is a bitch and she wears short shorts and stuff. And uh, let's say just someone made some art of her. Some, you know what I mean? Some, uh, some of the funny fanfic. Funny fanfic. Yeah, and this art was so popular oh my that God. people, they really wanted to see it. So what she did was she put an auction up on the in-game auction for a fishing pole because she's a fishing mare, marina fishing, and whoever was the highest bidder got the pictures of that. Oh. And guess how many coins it went for? How many? I, oh, first, one, first of all, first of all, actually, before you say that, um, how much is a coin in real life currency? Let's see. For ten dollars, I think you can get four million coins. Hold on. Cause there's skyblock pins. Let's see coins. Let's see. That's just so. There's iron, iron, gold, diamond, and emerald, redstone, lapis coins. No, there's only regular. Oh. Just look up, look up Marina Mayor Skyblock story. Coin, uh, uh, here, just tell me, tell me, tell me. So I think it was one billion coins that it went for. 
And back then, a the best weapon in the game, that was a 1 in 1,000 drop rate from a dungeon that took 30 minutes to complete each time was only worth 200 million coins. Christ. And someone paid 1 billion coins for it. Dude, the, the things people will do amaze me. Like, dude, just, 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 no. Just, bro, people's fantasies are so weird. Business. You hear that, Internet? Nobody's fucking business. Secondly, because of a little bit of a loophole, this isn't actually a firearm, because it is a black powder firearm that was made, designed, prior to 1898, including replicas of those firearms. Because of that, this is not technically considered a firearm, therefore, you have to stop to it, is that it's not an object, it's not a firearm, it's not a problem. Please consult your attorney before taking my advice in law. Uh, I am an internet meeting. And speaking of older handgun, up next we have what appears to be a modernized cult single action army, aka this. Of course, the only thing this one has that it doesn't is the red dot on top and the tactical light on the bottom. When you want to accurately ND into your cinematographer at night, Jesus Christ, I can't even finish that. Sorry, any, any chance we get to dunk on Alec Ball is just gold. Which reminds me, I need to take a moment to thank Acre Gold for making this video possible. Hmm. For PDF, I do not think this is what they're talking about. This is a downright garage gun. This, this actually just looks like a 12 gauge loot. Oh, the way, this is the first thing that, that popped up on my video Twitter feed. <laughs> is that personal or what? It says, why does Twitter take up so much space at Elon Musk? I don't think that stock looks very comfortable to shoot, but hey, if you have nothing else, you do you can, right? Next up, Mom, can we get a VSS Ventores? Ventores, that's what's called. VSS at home. This is VSS at home. It looks like an AS Bell. I'm guessing here, maybe like a... a the barrel of an AS Bell. Like a semi-auto 22, but it has what looks like... I'm, I'm trying to find a Twitter page that only posts creepy, like, videos, like, creepy, like, what uh, should I look up? Creepy pasta? I don't know. Creepy pasta? 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 Creepy pasta?
this came out. Phil, is it cursed? I don't know. You decide. Next up, it's time to get cranky. Crank it. With the crank. That's right. We've got the crank, AKS. Oh my god! He's got rail extenders. Rail extender, rail extender, rail extender, rail extender, rail extender, and uh, C seventy nine scope. I don't know aim while you're <laughs> shooting it from like low ready. This uh, it actually gets harder to look at the more I look at it. And I love cranks, so that it's a little difficult too. We need a repo. So next up, we have the Phalanx service to air weapon system. The CRAM. Is it cursed? Oh, no, it's awesome. That spare dollar is hard at work. What is cursed? You slap a fucking minion on it. <laughs> did this, or why they did this. But you just turned lethal R2D2 into cringe. Minions were cursed when. No set. When you max out the starter weapon. Jesus Christ, I think that's a, I think that's a 22. Point out that it's a 22. We'll completely ignore the fucking Hubble telescope on top. Uh, the, uh, the suppressor, the laser mount, the uh, vertical grip there, as well as uh, an interesting method of mounting the scope. At least you can't say it's not in line with the barrel. This is obviously an intentionally cursed setup. But what's even more cursed is how stupid uh, gun laws can be sometimes. Had this not been a super fucking long barrel like this, because this, this looks like a 16 inch barrel to me. Uh, had it not been that long, this would have been an illegal SBR. You can't put a vertical grip on a pistol without that being an SBR or at least a violation. Are of you the serious? Thing. Listen to this. Now, Brandon, that makes no fucking report. sense, you might say. Oh, so oh, oh, oh. Short that a school in two teenagers at a school in Texas are being charged with felonies after they released a fart spray so bad that the school had to be evacuated and six students were hospitalized after complaining of headaches and nausea. Okay, I get that it might have been bad, but going out on a stretcher bag? Dramatic, don't we? This whole building had to be closed for three days as hackers who scoured the campus with gas detection equipment. And the boys who carried out the crime being charged with possession of a prohibited threat, which is a third degree felony punishable by a Oh my god. Dude, yeah, that's also the same state where the girl got arrested for using a out-of-date $2 bill. Texas is just its own. It just needs to be its own state at this point. Or its own country. Texas is cursed in general. Rifle just because you put a pistol grip on the front of it. Well, Jimmy, that's because the people that write gun laws don't know a goddamn thing about guns. Laws you get. Anyway, hashtag repeal the NFA. Moving on. Speaking of horribly decked out 22s, Jesus Christ. It looks like an AR 15. It's just an AR style. With a. No buffer. With a. What buffer. looks like a. Um, looks like a 1022 A PPSH style. drum. Super short barrel with uh, no stock, no pistol grip, other than what appears to be like a sawn off shotgun's pistol grip. Wrapped it on to be able to fit on an AR style. System. Who did this? For when you want to dump a shitload of 22 and absolutely nothing in particular. It's a good thing they included the carry handle. I can imagine this gets heavy after a while, considering it's like three pounds of nothing. Hey, Tony, why are you putting all that picketing on the gun and not putting nothing on it? <laughs> okay, I'm done with this. No, I'm not. The, the skeletonized mag, well, it just doesn't. And I would say this it doesn't deserve the battlefield pickup look it's got, but who knows, this thing could have, you know. Seen extensive use in the hood. Mm. Have you ever thought to yourself, you know, I'd really love to use a sword, but I wish you would have the ergonomics of a Japanese Nambu handgun. Well, I don't know who thought that, but apparently somebody did. What the hell? It some, like, museum or Someone put a Japanese officer's sword. A Ruger? Captured by U.S. forces in the Pacific. Believe that the owner fabricated it himself. That has got to be some of the most weeb shit ever. I've issued a handgun, but I would really love to just charge it with a sword. Might have been a reason he got captured. Or killed. Sword got captured. Oh, Japan. You were weird before the bombs, huh? Not gonna lie, gun takes balls, though. Kind of impressed. One thing's for sure is that officer was going places. Probably a POW camp. But that's a place. The things you see when you visit Austria Arms. Jesus, this looks like a, it looks like 
somebody merged like an MGL grenade launcher uh, with an AK with like a Striker 12. Or a street Sweeper. What's funny is that for some fucking reason I actually know what this is. This was like a uh, this was like a multiple uh, cylinder revolving Polish. I think it was a flare launcher, like a 26 millimeter flare launcher. I don't remember what it was called. The WZ or something. I don't know. Holy, holy shit! It starts with the WZ something. Damn, no, I was wrong. Fuck. Yeah, it's usually WZ. Okay. It's the RGA 86. It's a revolving flare launcher. I was right about that. What an interesting little piece. Of course, it does take the uh, the AK pistol grips. I think that's a nice touch. So see, sometimes just because you don't know what it is doesn't mean it's cursed. Sometimes it's still cursed. I'm not gonna lie about that part. I mean, just lay awake at night and thought, I really wonder how I could make the Mini 14 worse. Anybody can think. This guy put his thoughts into action. Behold the full pop Mini 14. What is that? Oh my god, that's awful. I'm pretty sure that part of the stock is supposed to go over your shoulder. I don't know if you're supposed to crane your neck that way. Fuck it, maybe you're not supposed to use sights. Maybe it's just, uh, you, I don't know, fucking use the force loop. I don't know. Two things at the bottom that appear to either be a joystick or, I don't know, maybe the uh, rubberized bottom of a flashlight. A nice little trigger link. I do not like that. Your linkage that pretty much says, yeah, this trigger's gonna suck. Don't let your memes be memes, kids. This too could be you. Now, the caption on this was cursed RPK from Iraq. Yeah! Yeah, I can get down with that. That's, <laughs> it's at least got a lot going on. A lot of contradictory things going on. Right? Set 60 by 39, not exactly. Long range cartridge, even with a longer barrel with the RPK. So they've got kind of a janky dust cover mount with a big ass scope on it. Uh, not sure how that's going to quite work out for you, but all right. Good news is if you miss them, you got 75 more rocking that nice little drum on the bottom. With an accuracy by volume. I, you know what I need to do this summer? I need to get in like airsoft. Grenade launcher M203 down on the bottom of what looks like the Which begs the question if one was to shoulder and try to shoot it. Yeah, either one. I don't care. It doesn't matter which one. It's as far forward as that grenade launcher. I'm not allowed to keep working for them. You're going to have a bad time. It's not going to be comfortable. This is one of the. This is definitely. This is definitely a moment just set up. Not sure what else to say about this other than it's no wonder they fell to ISIS. I realize that's starting to sound a little bit bitter, so maybe it's a good idea if we just cut this episode. Cursed gun images right here. Thank God. I never couldn't take much more. Hold on. Please I've never done this one. Um, not with uh, the. Content. We've got Alex. Coming up. We've got some really good content coming out for the rest of this month, including you guys. Fucking get us there. Get that light gold. The fucking BSS video. Ready, and. <laughs> Let's look at that. Allegedly. We'll see. Anyhow, that's about all I've got for you guys. I appreciate you staying to the end. And as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers. What else stupid gum and gun images are there? Don't worry, Carl. Squirt can help you get these bad boys online and on the shelf. I was telling your merch guy exactly how to spell Carl with a K. That's all for you. Park, Square. Everything your business needs. Almost. I love this cursed gun images. It's hilarious. Oh god, it's one of the. Oh no! Why is there a trigger on the top of the gun? That's. I think it probably follows the other side, up the side of the receiver. Um, I think this works. So if you're unfamiliar, the brand is the British light machine gun that you know famously has the the 303 big ass uh, 20 round I think magazine that just sits on the top of the gun and the, the iron sights are offset from the magazine. The AK, you might have been able to see, has the magazine on the bottom where it belongs. This just looks like they were able to flip the AK upside down. Put I love how they kept actually they kept the sights on the bottom. They kept the rear sight on the bottom and just added they they welded the top part of a rear sight next to the mag on top. Fucking wonderful. And they also flipped around the front sight. So that's a pressed and pin barrel component. They just pressed it 
eight, 180 degrees on the opposite side and just fucking they just sent it. I'm impressed. I, I can't even hate on this one. That dust cover pistol grip, I'm sure, is stable as hell. And, you know, the stock being completely upside down on that angle, I, I'm sure that'll last for a good while. I don't know. Like, they, this is a full send. This is this was effort. This is effort put into this one. Dare I say, it's a blurst gun image. Actually, forgive me, Mikhail, for I have sinned. I kind of want one of these now. Tell you what, if this video hits a million views, I'm going to do it. We'll do a whole video. I can see that title now, Kalash my friend. I think we can make that work. I know you guys are thinking, last first gun image of the video, you said that if it got X many views, I think it was, it was a million views, uh, then it would, we would release the tactical bean holder. The tactical bean holder. It's a cup holder. For beans. I just want to let you know, uh. I'm 100% still going to do that. I just lost the file. <laughs> that is not something I ever expected to have to find again. So I will find it and I will release it. This is the 3D printed frame for the Walder PPK uh, from the Dead Disc guys. As you can see, it's a bit unconventional and just awful. <laughs> it does work. Um, and and I, I love that they thought to include... The have you watched this video before? What's going on? It's about... Have you ever seen where the meat are just love Oh, Oh, it's that one... Um... It's like one of those predator poacher things. Yeah. I think I've seen that guy, and he's like on like meth, I think. Mm -hmm. And he like tries to escape, but he crashes a stupid little car into like a bush. <laughs> Dude, that guy's like, no, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. No, no. And he, like, and he, he, he's like folding like an omelet, my guy. I've seen that. That guy is an absolute stupid egg. By the way, I am getting sent the new revised rails for the Plastikov V2, so that will be coming up soon. Plastikov. And, uh, I, I believe it's going to look a little bit better than this. Probably not by much, but a little bit. Speaking of leaving the Makarov out of this, what the fuck? I've Is that Rama? I've been getting sent this for a few months now. And to be honest, I've looked at this probably eight different times, six of which well inebriated, and I still can't figure it out. I believe the intention here <laughs> was to turn a police pistol, the Makarov PM, uh, that holds eight rounds into an open bolt machine gun. Why? Because fuck them, that's why. Because <laughs> with the bent sheet metal upper and the bent sheet metal little foregrip up front, because that is incredible 9 by 18 recoil that you're having for all of eight rounds. It's just, you, you definitely need a foregrip on that sucker. It's just weird, man. It's very, very strange. Yeah, moving on. I know it's the eyes causing this problem, but they're just going to pay for it. Ah, yes. I've seen this one before as well. Like the shovel! Yes! This was going to affect me. This it's the shovel handed AK! Abomination. You, you really think that this is going to be a problem for me? You merely adapted to the curse gun image. I was born in it, molded by it. I did not see a normal rifle until mm -hmm. I was a man. We all know what we're thinking. Trash shovel. It's the handmade rifle from the so new while the I was world. Out of town for the J-Max shoot, uh, this is what the boys in the shop put together. Get out of my way. So her name is Olga, and basically the story on this broad is uh, we have a bin at the shop uh, we call the Fucky Wucky Bin, uh, the parts bin, where we just have parts that are fucked up for one reason or the other. They they can't be put on a customer gun because there's something wrong. With them. And this is what came out of that. So this is entirely built out of parts that either needed significant work, looked awful, whatever, that couldn't be used on customer guns. The front sight gas block combo is a handful gas block uh, with a half a chopped front sight block welded onto it. The barrel is basically just a barrel stub. This receiver is a receiver that's actually blown up on me before. The stock is not a stock, it's a shovel. This is 
selector was chopped, so they riveted and welded on a trigger uh, trigger guard selector stuff <laughs> onto the side of the front of it. Everything is specifically made for this dumpster fire, and it's wonderful. Shovel stock is surprisingly comfy. Basically, what I'm saying is, ow! Basically, what I'm saying is, you're gonna have to do better than that. All right, we're getting there. This is a, hmm, uh, what would you call that? A flamboyant color scheme on uh, some sort of uh, Mac 10. A fidget spinner Mac 10. What really completes it is the SpongeBob SquarePants fidget spinner. That's gotta be wonderful. I, I wonder what that looks like during a Mac dump. Although, where did the blue come from in SpongeBob? I guess the, the water? It looks like a Bob the Builder assault pistol. <laughs> Yeah, man, back in my day, uh, we just, like, were having competitions on who had the coolest themed lunchbox. Kids these days have fucking everything. And because it's basically legally required for a Cursed Gun Images video, we've got a queue up. Talks the dick. 9, 9, 10, Mac 10, never end. And this is one that we had saved for Cursed Gun Images, but I'm glad it was included because I get sent these a lot. So I'll be it. This looks pretty steam how would it fire the magazines it looks it, it this is bad however i'm not gonna call it a cursed gun image and there's actually a reason behind that there's an entire series of guns like this that were prototype guns from a russian gun designer i shouldn't say a russian gun designer in russia a russian gun designer by the name of erman korobov uh, or german korobov erman korobov i don't know Everybody gets really pissed off at my inability to pronunciate things the correct Russian way. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not. I don't know if you know this, but I don't speak Russian! Anyway, Homeboy was a weapon developer over at the Tula Arms Plant, and he came out with some crazy prototypes. You can actually find, I think most of them are still available to, to see at the Tula Arms Museum if you happen to live in Russia. But they're whack. They're really whack. He really liked Bakelite for some reason, which, I mean, who amongst us doesn't? One of them included a triple barrel pull pup. What? I don't even know how the hell it worked, to be honest. But it's fucking whack looking. It's kind of, kind of rad. I'm not gonna lie. Just like a gummy thick AK mag. The entire handguard up front is just ripped for your pleasure. Kind of foamed it in on the rear. Um, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it looks like the iron sights are part of the stamping. Just, oh, this is so rad. I keep coming back. That's just whack. Anyway, you can Google that. You know, there's double barreled AR-15s. See, we're yeah, there's double barrel AR-15s. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I get. Oh God. Um. Here, look. They actually make this. This is literally a Democrat's worst nightmare, and you can buy them. Look, they exist. It's an actual AR, a double barreled AR, and it's about $2.2,000. If I wanted to, and if it was legal, I'd almost consider buying one. Dude, no raccoons get in the way with that bad boy. Two AR. <laughs> Dude, that thing has to be heavy as hell, too. Quick, sir. Hey. Wait, 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 where is the quick share video I was trying to watch? I, I literally just had, oh my god, crap, I'm getting cramps on my foot again. I hate that. I hate that so much. I do not like it. Ow. Ow, 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 
Oh my god, squirrel stapler. That video is an actual thing. Like, the, you know what the game is about? What? You literally have a dead wife, and you literally take squirrels and kill them, and you staple the squirrels to your wife. I'm not joking. I played sex with Hitler, with a girl, on, like, Discord. She's like, oh, you wanna play this? I mean, it was the worst why did you, why, did you, why did you tell me that on stream? No, my... <laughs> why? What are, what are your motives, young man? I don't own the game. I don't own it. I can own the game. What are your motives? Shotgun is basically the odd one out. Instead of shooting a stream of bullets in a straight line to exactly where you're coming at, the shotgun squirts many bullets at once in a big, wide pattern. And instead of having to ADS to be accurate, the shotgun has a tight spread at all times. Those are just a few of the many oddities that makes the weapon fundamentally different from any other gun available in your arsenal. And when something is fundamentally different, you sure bet the games get it fundamentally wrong. about snipers, I didn't have the opportunity to go full in depth about the different kind of shotguns. See, when I mention a shotgun, you might have in mind this pump action shotgun. And that's not weird. The standard shotgun you see in games is often modeled after the Mossberg 500, manufactured by Mossberg and Sons. This weapon is old, but Kalashnikov kind of old, but still old. And just like the AK, it's still in service to this day. Combine that with the fact it got used in so many conflicts in the past years, and it kind of explains why this shotgun in particular solidified its way into the entertainment industry as the shotgun. But what even is wrong with the shotgun? Two words, frustration and balancing. Whenever a shotgun is picked in a game, it often results in a lot of unnecessary frustration from both the recipient and the user. Common complaints are that it stimulates camping behavior or that it's too weak and on its own in certain situations. Another complaint would be about the inconsistency of the weapon. Sometimes yeah, not an enemy on 50 meters range, and other times dealing barely any damage at all. But the biggest complaint of the shotgun from universally everyone is the ability to one-shot your opponent. Which, like salt on a wound, is really easy to do with the shotgun, even against the best opponents. That is uh -huh. frustrating stuff. Sure, on top of that, that there are many different kind of shotguns with a sickening amount of modifications possible. AA-12. And you get the hardest balancing challenge to tackle out of all the weapons. But before we can even attempt to tackle the many issues the shotgun has, we first have to highlight every single problem. You see, we can't forget about the shotgun's iconic brothers. The Mossberg shotgun is a pump-action shotgun. This means to operate the weapon, You're you have pumping. to manually move the sliding handguard up and down. That's kind of slow. This, however, is not the only way for shotguns to operate. This it's fast, that can auto-operate some of other. Rapid shells in quick succession. Oh, the A-12 that can just automatically... But how is it able to shoot so quickly? Well, that is because the Spaz-12 wasn't a pump-action shotgun. Okay, that's not entirely true. If you really wanted to, you could manually pump shells into the chamber. But that's for losers. The Spaz-12 was made for semi-automatic use. And how that works is actually quite clever. When you shoot the cartridge, the ignition causes a lot of gas pressure. Gas, so yep, I knew it. semi-automatic shotguns do is use that pressure in their advantage to cycle the next cartridge into the chamber, which means you don't have to manually move them into the chamber yourself. This causes the weapon. Yeah, you do. You have about an hour and ten the minutes. Fastest kind of shotgun to see in the game. No, I'm talking. Are you able to this part? We are left with yeah. automatic shotguns. 
Oh yeah, if you want to, you can bring the controller over. Two, I would recommend two controllers. I love the A12. Boom, 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 boom. The final problem child in this video is the break action shotgun. I probably don't have to tell you how these kind of shotguns are called, but I will anyway. I love break the actions, they're so good. Shotguns. Perhaps the most Don't dude. I actually thought of um I thought of yeah, bring two uh controllers, but I thought about making like a laser pistol design. Like I always make like rifle concepts. You know how I thought about doing it a uh, Wyatt or Alex? What? I was so inspired by the uh the wingman from Apex. I was gonna design a pistol that just has a big, like a, like a box card that you put in the back that break action and you just put it in. Like imagine you just like, you fling it down. What's it called? You fling it down and it ejects and you take the cartridge, put it in, flip it up like just doink, doink, doink. Just a big hand cannon like that. Dude, I was one mean mother effer when I played him too. I didn't care. I didn't. I. I will, it's like I was like the person. that's like, oh, feelings. Shoots them with a shotgun, then stomps them and burns it, and then poisons it with cat. Like I will literally destroy your feelings. I will literally wreck your day. I will make you want to leave the game. I was an awful per piece of crap. Oh, oh, what was that? You camping? Dead. <laughs> I just loved doing that. I I loved just actually bringing terror to my enemies. <laughs> weapon capacity with only one shell per barrel now this is already a lot of things we have to go through but we haven't even reached the bottom of the rabbit hole yet all the way at the bottom of the hole we find perhaps the biggest and hardest thing to balance about shotguns yeah, as well. the shells there are so many different kind of shotguns 12 gauge 4 gauge this point, it's 14 gauge 6 gauge 8 gauge incendiary bugs explosive slugs and even flashbang shells oh my god yeah there are tons of shells there are like, yeah, bird shot, penny shot, slugs, there are, n people just put whole nails inside these shells. Yeah, apparently what people do, Alex, is that they take pennies, cut them up into eight pieces, and put them in shotgun shells. This is called penny shot, and it will completely wreck your day. The point is, shotgun ammo is some of the most customizable ammo. In fact, it's almost hard to find some of the same consistent brand uh, shells, unless you're actually, you know... What's it called? Unless you're picking the same For brand. For simplicity's sake, though, we are only going to balance the two major type of shells, which are buckshot and slugs. Let's start with the bucky and the sluggy, shall we? This might sound weird, but I want you to forget about the shotgun and only focus on our little buddy right here. And to help you forget about the shotgun, take a look at this stick. No, just this stick. This stick will shoot our shotgun shell. We simply put it in the hole and slap the back to shoot the pellets away. Is this how it works in real life? Probably not. Should you try it? Probably also not. Speaking of in real life, a common frustration. I'm Javi, and I got Botox. I don't want Botox. Botox is. I know my. I don't care if it's if I'm wrong about it. It just it has you know the boxes and stuff that can literally kill you like a nanogram. I'm still Javi. Frustration. The real gun that I have is our stick gun. Is that it's often implemented completely unrealistic. If in a game I shoot a personal 20 meter range, he'll just shrug it off and quickly kill me after. But if I shoot someone in real life on 20 meter range, I will go to jail for first degree murder. Games always make it look like the guns are really bad on the longer ranges. But that is simply not true. The effective range of a bloodshot shell in real life is around 35 meters. I can agree on that. I mean, I've taken, I fired a shell from at least, I mean, I might be poorly talking, but I fired shotguns from, and I've literally aimed for cans about 10 feet away, and it, or not maybe 10, but 10 meters away, and it still completely rips these cans to shreds, even after two shots. Like, like, if you, like, like it doesn't matter, even if you get hit with a shotgun and you survive, your life expectancy has actually dropped. Because the, sh with the little pieces are always stuck in your skin. Yes, that's how evil shotguns can be. Range of a slug is more than a hundred meters. 
really makes you think how unrealistic those shells are implemented in our games, doesn't it? But there is a really good reason why they are changed so much. If in the games, Buckshot really was as dangerous as in real life, in CSGO, you would be able to one-shot opponents all the way from over here, and in Valorant, all the way from over here. And if Valorant had a slug shotgun, you would be able to kill someone in one shot, all the way from over here. That is a bit ridiculous. But why is it so hard to balance those simple shells? Shouldn't we just determine a good killable range and call it a day? We can't. Because those shells go into many different kinds of stick guns. Slow shooting ones, fast shooting ones, and one shooting ones. If this bug shell or slug shell does the same amount of damage no matter the weapon, it would be stupid to play a stick that shoots only once or slower, as the faster one does the same amount of damage but also has a higher DPS. This is the big issue in the shot I mean stay good scene. If we try to follow realism, you simply cannot make all the weapons balanced. So the only thing we can do is to change the laws of the universe. It's the only way to satisfy our player base's needs. So let's change those laws of nature. Check it out. And we will do so by looking at the steps. Nice the little bridge, not bad. <laughs> and then it's gonna be like a little tiny like apartments. So they're gonna look like um are you gonna make it two? Nope, Next but now I will. <laughs> uh, see like those apartments over there? I, I like how like... I didn't get any inspiration for that. I started toying around and look at this, what I've nailed down. I love the new modernistic buildings I built. Mm -hmm. I like them too. I love how there's like, like if you go over here, uh, or um, there's, that's not the right building, but if you go like... Uh, like right there, you see how there's like a little, there's a blue, there's a blue apartment, and there's a yellow apartment poking out, and there's an orange one, and here, like, they're themed. You know what's crazy to think about? I remember making a zoo when I was little in Minecraft, it had cheese, cows, a chicken, maybe horses, now I can put like pandas, axolotls, yeah. so much different stuff in it. Have you, ever, um, um, have you ever seen what I call lamplight caverns? Or lantern light caverns. I built this all in a, in a nice morning. It's a national park. I think I actually have to come back here because uh, I'm just gonna put a lantern right there. Maybe uh, one right here. Yeah, that's. And I actually was going to build a shack for this. You remember that one old shack? I might build a smaller variant in that right there. But I just wanted to turn this to like a little national park, and I did. Huh. This, however, should not come as a surprise to you if you've seen the sniper video as I've shown the shotgun there with the same stats format. Before we start to crank some values up and down to see how we could possibly change the weapon, I do want to first add one normal and two separate values to our statistics. Tightness, nice. Frustration, and versatility. The tightness stat is to measure how tight the spread of the shotgun is. Frustration being here to measure how annoying it is to have the weapon in your match, and versatility to show how much you can do with the weapon in terms of choices. Tightness is something that we could also give to other weapon categories, but that really depends on the game you have in mind. In games like Tarkov, Counter-Strike, and once again Val, your gun tightness is basically maxed out, as you don't necessarily need to ADS to have your weapon shoot at your crosshair. But in Call of Duty, Battlefield, Siege, and like 80% of all other games out there, it does make a difference. But for this video, and once again for simplicity's sake, we will only give the stats to the shotgun. Naturally, we would want the versatility and frustration value on the shotgun to look like the one on the assault rifle. Since the AR is the most basic gun out there, there isn't really a lot to get frustrated about. And because you can use it on all but the most extreme ranges, the versatility stat is set to really high. And on the sniper, it would look like this. Slight frustrations, which you sadly can't get rid of due to the nature of the weapon, and versatility on an okay level. 
Unfortunately, we can't simply tone the frustration and versatility step up and down like we could with, for example, the fire yeah. or damage step. Yeah. I didn't know you, you knew I was here. I asked him on stream. Oh. Man. <coughs> hey, that's 